Hey there, I want to show you how I've made the classic Minesweeper in C. No graphics were used, it's just a console game. But it works like a classic Minesweeper. Let's first look how my Minesweeper looks like. Firstly, the game asks you to choose the level you want to play. In order to move your cursor, you have to press the WASD keys. To open a cell, you have to press O. To flag the cell, you have to press F. In order to put a question on a cell, you have to press Q. If you want to cheat, then you have to press C. Or if you want to leave your current game, you can press L. Then a message asks you if you want to play further. I press Y so I can show you a quick demonstration of the game in action. Now let's get to the code. We will first look at external.h and the corresponding C file. In the header I have an enumerator which contains all colors that we may need for the Minesweeper field. To get the text color and the background color we have to include the windows.h which is a default windows API for window management. This header obviously works only for windows. And then we combine the text colors with bitwise or so we get different colors. Then I have a struct underneath with a color, a character and the y and x coordinates. So now if we want to draw a character on a position, we have all the necessary information for that stored in our defined data type object. After that we have some functions declared here. So let's get to the actual definitions which are in the external.c file. The first function is very easy to understand. It should show the cursor or hide it. Depends on the bool state we over give. The second function here is quite important. It should help us to put the cursor on the position we want it to be. So we can draw or erase on the given position. Because of this function we don't have to clear and draw on the screen each time we want to update our map. Then here is a function for drawing a character on a given position. Also underneath there is a function which sets the current color. Next we have a function that prints a colored character on a given position with a given color. The sprint function does the same but instead it draws a string. And last but not least we have the print function which prints the object on the position with its color and character. Now let's get to the map header. Here I include the external header. I have two enums here, one will be used for representing the cell state. It will be important for us to know in which state a cell is currently set. And the second says what kind of a cell it is. Then here we describe our data type cell, which contains the object, the kind and its current state. Underneath are plenty of functions that we will look closely in the C file. Here we have two static global variables, the y size and the x size of the Minesweeper field. Those variables are internally linked, that means that they are only visible within this file. Next we have the map which is a pointer that will point to the first element of the dynamically allocated memory of cells. So let's assign the map and then draw it on the screen. There is a function for that called assign draw map with y length, x length of the map and the amount of bombs that have to spawn as the parameters. Let's first assign the y size and the x size to the parameters. After that we allocate a memory block of cells and store the address to the first element into the map pointer. I also assign all of the map cells kind to empty. So now we have a map, but the cells are empty. So let's generate the map by placing bombs randomly on the map. To access a cell on the map, we have to have a function which will return a cell in a given position. And here it is. If the cell on the random position is already a bomb, then we don't place it again on the same position. So we try again. Now we have placed the bombs on the map. What's next? We need to place numbers which will say how many bombs around the cell are. 
For that we loop through the map. We have to assign all the cell state to closed. If the cell on the position is not a bomb, then we go in and count the amount of bombs that are around the cell. The cell bomb function returns true if the cell is not outside of the map boundaries and if the cell is a bomb. After that we call a function named assign cell with the parameters int n for the amount of bombs and their position. The function says already what it does. It just assigns the cells to the corresponding amount of bombs. For instance, if there are no bombs around, then the cell kind is set to empty, and the object which will be printed to console is set to an empty character. Then back here we print the amount of bombs on the map through the print bombs left function. And then we print the map. So if the show variable is equal to false or the bomb was hit, then we print the cell. We check for the state here, for example if the player hit the bomb then we assign the object color to dark magenta and then print it. Or if the cell is open then we just get the cell's object and then print it. Else we just print the map's object. Ok, let's move on to the player function. We have to overgive the amount of bombs on the map. Here are some variables declared which are temp position, game over state, the show map boolean, the amount of flagged cells, the amount of bombs flagged and the amount of questioned cells. Underneath we have a loop which loops until the player either lose or win. Right here we get into the switch statement where the player is asked to press a key. We do the appropriate action to the key our player presses. The player is moving with the WSD keys, so we have to check in here whenever the player can move or not. For example, if the player is outside the map, then the player can't move, right? We check that through the isOutside function. If it's true, then we change the position. If the player pressed O, then he wants to open a cell. So firstly we assign the cell we just opened its state to open. If the cell is a bomb, that means the player lost the game, so we print that out and assign the game over boolean to true. Next what we want to do is to try to open the surrounding cells, but to do so the cells has to be empty, if not then return. In other case we try to open the surrounded cells through the try open function. In the function we check if the position we gave over is not outside the map. If it's not then we get the cell on the position and check if the cell state is already open. In the function we check if the position we gave over is not outside the map. If it's not then we get the cell on the position and check if the cell state is already open. If it's true then return. Else we assign the cell state to open and we print the cell. Here comes the recursive part, where we call the open cells again and again until we stumble to a non-empty cell. The algorithm stops when all the cells that were checked before are not empty. Back to our player's input, in case F is pressed, that means that the player wants to place a flag on the cell. If the cell is open, then we can't place any flags. If the cell state equals to questioned, then we have to decrement the amount of questions the player has placed on the map. If the cell is already flagged, then we have to remove the flag on the cell. So we decrement the flags amount and print the amount of bombs left. Then we set the cell to closed. And if the cell is a bomb, then we decrement the amount of bombs flagged. So we break. If neither of that is true, then we increase the amount of flagged cells, print the amount of bombs left and set the cell state to flagged. And also we have to check if the cell is a bomb, then we increase the amount of flagged bombs. If Q is pressed, then the player wants to set a question mark on the cell. Therefore, the player suspects that the cell is a bomb. It's very similar to the F case, but instead of decrementing the amount of questions here, we decrement the amount of flagged cells. But we should also check if the cell is a bomb, because if it is, we have to decrease the amount of bombs flagged. Next is the C case, which stands for cheat, that allows the player to open all cells. Nothing really special here, we just want to hide or unhide the map. It depends if the player press the C key once, which means it should unhide the map, or twice, then the map should be hidden again. And finally the L case. In that case the player wants to leave the game. We unhide the map and return. 
outside the switch statement we check if the player won the game. To do so we check if all of the bombs are flagged. The amount of bombs flagged are the same as the amount of the bombs. And also if the amount of flagged cells are equal to the amount of bombs on the map. And last if the amount of questioned cells are zero. If this all is true then the player has won the game. So we print it out and set the game over boolean to true. So the player can leave the current game. Temp Y and Temp X represent the player's previous position. Check here if the show map is equal to false. If that's true, then we print the cell the player was standing on before. Otherwise, we draw the cell's kind. After that, we save the player's current position. Next, we print the player. In case the game over boolean is true, then we go out of the loop and unhide the map. Yeah, that's actually all for the map.c file. Now all what is left to do is to call the important functions in the main. Let's use all of the headers we created. We will need them. Also we have to add the time.h so we can generate our random seed dependent on the current time. So all of the random stuff will work randomly as we expected. We don't want to show the cursor, we set the title here. Here is the size of the map and the amount of bombs declared. We ask the player which level he wants to play. So we adjust the size and the amount of bombs to the corresponding choice. After that we clean the console. We call the assigned row map and pass all of the variables we just defined. Next we call the player function. We loop there until the game ends. Next we ask the player if he wants to play a game. If yes then we clean the console and do all over again. If not then just exit the game. Oh, and yes, since we allocated a block of memory, we have to free it. Now we are done. But I would suggest you to change the window settings like mine. That's it, subscribe to my channel, leave a like, ask in the comments if you don't understand something. Code is in the description below.